Greg Butterworth wrote, when we measure man from the viewpoint of human, we come up with a table of limitations. When we measure him from the criterion of the divinity of man, we must conclude with Jesus that all things are possible. It's September, new month, new affirmation, new focus, is, which is on balance. Balance is possible. So here is our new affirmation. When I place God first, I find my life is in balance and all is well. Let's do a rehearsal on our new affirmation together. When I place God first, I find balance. Life is in balance and all is well. I tried to look away and so I, let's do that again. Okay, so that was, now it's the dress rehearsal. <clears throat> When I place God first, I find my life is in balance and all is well. Now it's a dress rehearsal, okay? When I place God first, I find my life is in balance and all is well. So now in theater terms, you're now off book. You don't need your script, okay? <laughs> because you're gonna take this with you. Actually, you have it in your bullets and you can take it with you that way as well. But in your heart, let's do this together. When I place God first, I find my life is in balance and all is well. Take a breath, take a seat, take a moment, and just be. Here you are, that's enough. Give yourself permission to unplug. Unplug, unlearn, unwind, unyearn, unseek, unturn, unmove. Unplug, unplay, unmake, unsay, unsing, unthink, undo. Take a breath for yourself, just for you and no one else. Feel the quiet, feel the love, feel the peace when you unplug. Unplug, unlearn, unwind, unyearn, unturn, unmove, unseek. Unplug, unplay, unmake, unsay, unsing, unthink, undo. Unplug, unrush, Unwake, untouch, unpush, unplan, unload. Unplug, ungo, unwind, unknow, unwonder, 
Welcome home. Take a breath, take a seat, take a moment, and just be. Take a moment and just be. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Earlier this week, I sent Thomas a message saying, I'm doing a talk, it's called Time to Unplug. You want to do special music? And he's like, sure. A little bit later, he's like, Daniel Naiman has this song called Unplugged. I listened to it and I said, let's do it. Take a breath for yourself, just for you, no one else. How often do we give ourselves that luxury? How often do we give ourselves some sacred time to just be still and in the moment? Before I go any farther, I should introduce myself for those of you who, that don't know me. I'm Reverend Michael Everett Davis. I am ordained as an interfaith minister through One Spirit Interfaith Seminary, and I am serving as spiritual leader here at Unity Indianapolis under special dispensation with Unity Worldwide Ministries. So, as we continue to affirm that in our lives that all things are possible, which we've been doing all month. This is the ninth month, though September would tell us it's the seventh month. But it's the ninth month of the year. And we're going to explore that balance is possible. When I place God first, I find that my life is in balance and all is well. But in our contemporary lives, we, there's so much that we got to do. There's so many things that we need to do. We are getting pulled in all directions. Uh, we see ourselves coming and going. We're juggling multiple things. And then just as soon as things seem to slow down, something else pops up and needs our immediate attention. It's like a constant game of whack-a-mole. <laughs> right? You think, it's like, where is it? I, uh, uh, I won't stop. So, as I was thinking about my life this week, I was like, it's like I'm a fancy vacuum cleaner. Stay with me, okay? So, I'm like this fancy vacuum cleaner. I have one job, that is to suck up dirt. And yet, I have a whole bunch of other attachments. Okay? You can put on that, the attachment, that, the thin one, where you can get into the crevices of, of, the, of the sofa and the chairs or in the corners. Um, there's another one you can put on uh, that's a little bit wider. Maybe you can, you can vacuum the drapes, maybe. Is that what it's for? Yeah. Um, uh, I actually had, uh, I used to have a vacuum that had a fancy attachment on it. You would stick it on there, and uh, it would actually spin. It didn't work real well, but it was really cool. Uh, because you would press down on the couch and then it wouldn't spin, but it was, a, it was a cool thing. It was this fancy attachment. And so then you have all these attachments on your vacuum, and then uh, for whatever reason, you're not really not paying attention, you're vacuuming, and you're just like, this isn't working very well. And I was like, it's because that hose is still, you didn't, forgot to take the attachment off and put the hose back on the thing. So it's sucking in this way, and it's, you're trying to get this way, and it's not doing a very good job, and the next thing you know, you sucked up a sock. Or, or the drapes are now stuck in there, or the cat, or whatever. It's because you forgot to 
take off that attachment and put it back on the way it was supposed to be. So me, I am this fancy thing. I am a, I am an unique individual expression of the divine. That's pretty fancy, right? We all are. We're all, we are all fancy. We are, we are all individual expressions of the divine, and we have one job, and that is to be that expression of the divine. And we have a whole bunch of attachments that we can use as well. Uh, I have this really uh, cool attachment that I can attach to this, this expression of the divine, which we call Michael. Um, and there's this attachment I, I put on, and it's called spiritual leader. And it does all kinds of stuff. It writes talks. It prays with people. Uh, it, it comes up with music and the PowerPoint and the newsletter. All kinds of really groovy things. Um, I also have another attachment that I can put on, and, uh, on, this, on this thing called Michael. And it's called a standardized patient trainer that I do during the week, during the day, where I work with medical students and nursing students and, and physicians on on uh, communication skills, and, or I may be facilitating an event, or I might be doing something else. I may be going to Bloomington to work with some med students. All kinds of things this attachment does. And then I have another very special attachment that uh, I put on when I'm at home. And that's, I'm a spouse. I'm a dog dad. Sometimes I'm a cook. Sometimes I'm a housekeeper. Sometimes I'm a gardener. Sometimes I'm a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes I'm someone to celebrate wins with. And I have all these attachments that come with me. Okay, batteries not included. But the attachments are there. And if I forget to take them off, if I forget that it was like, I left home, I'm going to go to Unity, I'm going to do the talk, and, I, and the dog threw up on the carpet, and I brought that with me, because dog dad is still attached here. It might affect what I'm doing here and distract me. Or if there's something going on here with our community, and, and I don't take that off when I go to the simulation center, that may distract what I'm doing there, because I forgot to unplug. Right? So, Sometimes I get really overwhelmed with all the things that I do. And don't get me wrong, I love everything that I do, all the aspects, all these attachments. Love them. I love what I do and how I show up in this world. But sometimes I get overwhelmed because I forget to unplug or to put it away, and I keep it with me, and then I can't do anything, and I freeze up. There's only one thing that I can do in that moment, and that is to close my eyes and just breathe. Thank goodness I know that tool now. I used to didn't have that tool, and I would get to that point, and it would uh, most likely manifest itself in a, in a meltdown or a breakdown because there was just so much. I had a mini breakdown in GFS one time because they rearranged everything. I wanted to go in and go in and out, and I couldn't because I couldn't find anything. And I was in a hurry. I needed to unplug. It's like when you have your computer and you have a whole bunch of tabs open, hundreds of tabs, right? I'm nodding, okay, it's not just me. Uh, all these tabs are open, and then your computer's not performing as it should. It's running slow. You can't get anything, and then you just have them all. So, what do you have to do? You have to close all those tabs. You close those tabs out, and then that one website that you're working on isn't doing anything. It's just sitting there. So what do you do? You hit refresh. That's today's daily word, refresh. You hit the refresh button, and what does it do? It cleans out all of the cache or cache, however it's supposed to be said. It cleans all of that out, and it reboots that website, and it comes up. And then all the information that you, that, that you weren't getting is there because you brought it back up. You, you rebooted, you brought it back up to life and got rid of all of the stuff that was bogging it down. So how can we find balance in our crazy, overwhelming lives, right? 
Well, the answer we've already said is in our affirmation this month, when I place God first. This is how we do it. We place God first. This is how we find divine order. When something happens and we say, oh, it's, it's in divine order, it's because we could see God in it. Now, also, when I say place God first, I'm not talking about the judgmental old man up in the sky aspect of God that we all once knew. We're not putting that first. We're putting the divine first, divine order. And on order is one of our 12 powers, as taught by Charles Fillmore. And this month, we look, focus on order, as the, the women in bloom will find out later for this month, right? Uh, but order is the intelligence of the universe expressing through each of us. So divine order is the intelligence of the universe expressing through us. And when we recognize that, we say, oh, this is in divine order. And we find harmony and balance when we center our awareness on that order, on that divine intelligence going through the universe. Author Paula de Arce wrote, God comes to us disguised as our life. God comes to us disguised as our life. Because the divine intelligence of the, of the universe is everywhere, right? We know it's in each of us. It's around each of us. And it's even way out there where we can't see. It's beyond us. It is there as well. And it is all working toward our good. Each of our own good. So when we get stressed out and overwhelmed with everything that we need to do in life, it looks chaotic and crazy, right? Sometimes unmanageable. Sometimes life is ugly. But it's not, it's because we are expressing the chaos of the world and not expressing the divine intelligence of the world. When we unplug from all of the world stuff, all that stuff that we're doing and doing and doing and doing, all those attachments that we have, when we unplug from those and go straight to source, then we are expressing through the divine. So how do we do this? There's one I'm going to talk about. There's probably many. There's one I'm going to talk about today. Um, how many of you have heard of these things called commandments? There's ten of them, right? Um, written on a tablet. Charlton Heston went up, came back. <laughs> number four. Yes, number four. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Metaphysical meaning of Sabbath. The seventh Seventh day, seventh month, seventh year. Restoration. Restitution. Return to a former state. at one -ment. Atonement. Completion. Perfection. Wholeness. Repose. Rest. In some traditions... The Sabbath is, is honored at the end of the week, uh, the seventh day, or the, yeah, the seventh day, because in the Hebrew scripture, the creation story is on the seventh day, God rested. And so that is a, the, a normal tradition is on the seventh day, you rest. Well, on the seventh day, you do spiritual practice, you honor the divine, you do that, uh, Jewish traditions, it starts at sundown on Friday and ends on sundown on Saturday. In, in 
Christian tradition, then it's Sunday. That's the day you go to church. The word atonement popped out of me, at me, so I wanted to look at that as well. Metaphysical meaning, atonement from the revealing word, reconciliation between God and man through Christ. The uniting of our consciousness with the higher consciousness. The uniting of our consciousness with the higher consciousness. So our own awareness, our self-awareness, uniting with the awareness of the universe is what atonement is. It's unplugging from our worldly stuff and uniting with spirit. When our lives get so out of whack that we can't seem to know what is going on or to help prevent from getting to that point in the first place, we unplug from the world and we go inside and we align with divine, with the one power, the one presence, the all there is, the intelligence of the universe, uniting our personal awareness with that higher awareness, with the universe, and we return to our at one mint, our perfection through the Christ presence and awareness within all around and beyond. We remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath. Remember to connect. That keeps that connection sacred. Now, we may not be able to take an entire 24 hours at the end of a week to devote to the aligning with the divine, but we can take short breaks to remember the Sabbath. Little sacred moments, I like to call them. It's simple. Pray before each meal. Say a prayer before each meeting. I'm not talking gathering up your business people and let's hold hands and say a prayer silently between you and the divine. Center, connect, Thank you, God, for a great meeting. Thank you, God, for focused communication. And go into your meeting that way. Go into your life that way. Um, Meditate. At least once a day, if you can. Read books and articles of a spiritual nature. Stand in awe of nature. How many people this week went outside to look at the moon? Great spiritual practice. Looking out, being in awe of that giant super blue moon. It's not going to happen again for a long time. Be in awe of that. Be in wonder. Be in connection with it. Know that it's a part of you and you are a part of it. Take spiritual class. Listen to uplifting positive music. Unplug and breathe. I would like to take this time for, I wrote the word brief, meditation. We'll see how brief it is. We're going to take time for a meditation. And in this meditation, I'm going to be using some music uh, by Daniel Namod. And I'll be ending with a poem written by Myrtle Fillmore. So I invite you to find yourselves comfortable, feet flat on the floor, whatever you need to do to prepare for meditation. Take a seat. Take a breath. Close your eyes if you're willing. This world as it is Go inside To find my God 
I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this world as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this day as it is, go inside to find my God. Inside there is peace, inside there is joy, inside there is more than enough. Inside there is peace, Inside there is joy, inside there is sacred love. I will leave this day as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this day as it is, Go inside to find my God. Inside there is peace. Inside there is joy. Inside there is more than enough. Inside there is peace. Inside there is joy. Inside there is sacred love. I will leave this life as it is, go inside to find my God. I will leave this life as it is, go inside to find my God. Go inside to find my God. I'll go inside to find my God. Take a breath in. Let that breath out. Take this moment to just be. Right here, right now, you are enough. Give yourself permission to unplug, to unlearn. Let go of the falseness that you have learned in the past. Unlearn the prejudices that were drilled into us. Unlearn, unpack from past hurts. In his book, A New Way of Thinking, Charles Roth wrote, I put the past behind me. I face forward with my hand in God's, knowing that I am unerringly guided to right action and successful outcome. I am grateful. Unplug, unwind, unyearn, let go of the yearning of something you have not reached yet. Know that it is already yours. Unseek, it's already there.
forgive yourself and unsay those things that you wish you had never said. Let them go. They are washed away. Unthink the negative thoughts you've ever had about yourself or anyone else or the world. Unplug from that thought. Let it go. Let go of the thoughts of error. Unplug. A poem, My Faith, written by Myrtle Fillmore in 1897. I do not believe in evil. I believe in good. I do not believe in sin. I believe in truth. I do not believe in want. I believe in abundance. I do not believe in death. I believe in life. I do not believe in ignorance. I believe in intelligence. There are no discords in my being. Being is peace. My faith, understanding, and love are one. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Unplug. Breathe. And just be. Take a deep breath in. And let that out. As we come back from this meditation into the room, remember what this feels like. What this sacred time is. Breathe it in. And breathe it out. holding the sacred time in your heart. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Take this sacred moment with you. Carry it in your heart. Carry it in your body. This feeling of oneness. Take it with you out into your life and all that you do. When you're done with a task, unplug it. Put it away. And whenever you need a sacred moment, just breathe. And so it is.